I think we have a lot of work to do in the broader context to understand that just because you have a uterus and just because that uterus bleeds says nothing about your identity as a person. Menstruation. It's when a person's uterus sheds its lining, causing menstrual blood and tissue to flow out of the uterus every month. Billions of people experience this across the globe and across the gender spectrum, meaning it's not just women who menstruate. Dr. Jean DeHaan is an OBGYN in Portland that focuses on LGBTQ health and trans care. They are transmasculine, non-binary. When I was 11, I started bleeding and I thought I was dying. I remember one of my mom's friends was like, oh, you're a woman now. And I was so destroyed that I went into our laundry room and I would not come out for the rest of the time that that person was there visiting me. Dr. DeHaan says they, like many others, experienced gender dysphoria. It's the feeling of discomfort or distress that might occur in people whose gender identity differs from their sex assigned at birth. For some people, it's incredibly dysphoric and it is n not acceptable. And for some people, they want to bleed or some people are attempting pregnancy or, um, you know, have a relationship with their cycle that they value. So you, you cannot assume that someone doesn't want to bleed or has dysphoria around their cycle or around their pelvic organs based on their identity. You have to talk to them about it. Dr. DeHaan says it's not a commonly broached subject, even in the trans and non-binary communities. And that's because everyone's relationship with menstruation is different. We spoke with trans model and activist Kenny Ethan Jones about his individual experience. And I was 15 when I experienced my first period and I, I hated it. It was it was just, ugh, it gives me like weird heebie-jeebie feelings. Periods were the number one thing that made me feel so disconnected from my own body and just fragile in my identity because, you know, that narrative back then wasn't, boys didn't have periods. I felt like my body was betraying me. And so spending, you know, your life every month coming knocking a period and having to relive that, you know, it's, it was quite traumatizing, to be honest. Gender affirming care, including taking testosterone, changed Kenny's life when he was 16 years old. I lost Kenny when I started to have my periods and when I started to dislike my body, I just became a shell of myself. And so I was really stepping into Kenny 2.0. At 16, I was like, I'm Kenny now. And in most cases, Dr. DeHaan says, There's no danger in stopping a period. If you have an IUD or you're on continuous birth control pills or some other hormonal testosterone, some other hormonal modification of your body to make you not bleed, that's totally okay. And while menstruation alone can cause dysphoria, Dr. DeHaan says public bathrooms add another layer of stress. And with new anti-trans bathroom laws in states like Oklahoma and Alabama, trans students are being forced to use bathrooms they aren't comfortable with. I mean, you add bleeding onto that, it, it, it's almost impossible. You know, so I, I, def, I know that people will be forced to make different decisions about where they can go um, <clears throat> based on the availability of gender neutral bathrooms or based on whether or not they're bleeding. Are they bleeding heavily? Are they going to have to access a bathroom regularly? Are they going to need additional products? Period products are often touted as feminine hygiene products. Kenny told us how distressing it was for him to buy these products as a teenager. I would like travel to shops that were outside of my area because if they, like I seen buying period products as outing myself as trans. I hated every moment of it. I felt like I shouldn't be buying this because I didn't feel like I should be using them because inclusive language wasn't used. I felt disconnected from my body. I felt disconnected from my identity. Not everybody who menstruates is a woman. And so I feel like the dialogue is becoming more inclusive, but the marketing certainly isn't. Play tech sport. Play on. In 2018, Pink Parcel's I'm On campaign sought to challenge the stigma around periods and portray a diverse group of people who menstruate. And after careful consideration, Kenny agreed to be part of a campaign. A lot of like the comments under the article and the campaign was very much from cis women being like, I had never considered this, but oh my God, like I can't now unsee it. I had a few trans men message me and basically they were upset with me. Again, for aligning our bodies more with women's bodies, I chose to be a part of that campaign was because I, it felt freeing. 
the idea of taking something that I was so ashamed of and caused such like a disconnect in my body and made me feel fractured in my identity, owning up to that and being like, I'm going to feel powerful in this situation. And I'm going to say that this is just a bodily function that I experience. And it doesn't determine my gender. I determine my gender. And according to Dr. Dahan, transgender feminine individuals can experience what they call a, quote, cyclical hormonal milieu. Some people are on testosterone blockers or estrogen or progesterone, or a combination of all the above. And so depending on their where they are in terms of their delivery of medication or their dosing, they might feel some hormonal fluctuations. And that is what a cycle is, is hormonal fluctuation. Dr. DeHaan says understanding the chronic stressors that impede on a transgender person's life is crucial. We're at higher risk of depression, anxiety, suicide, unstable housing, inadequate access to jobs, all of those things. So um, when you're thinking about addressing gender-affirming care, you have to be trauma-informed in your approach. You, you have to understand that daily chronic stress and the, the buildup of that over somebody's lifetime. Um, it's, it's very significant for a lot of us. Using inclusive language would have made all of the difference for little Kenny. I would just like trans people to be thought about, you know? I think we've spent so long not being thought about and being, you know, on the backbone of these discussions, but, you know, periods affect us just as much as they do cis women. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.